So now in recent videos, we looked at the three basic uh, modes for the 555 timer. There was bi-stable, monostable, and a-stable. And that's generally what you see in circuits. But you could also use the 555 timer to invert the output from what the input signal is. So you don't have to use a, a voltage divider like this. This is called a trim pot. There's a resistive element that goes from one end to the other and uh, those two pins um, are there. So we got the power supply voltage across there. And then there's a wiper that slides along there. So if you set it halfway, you get half of the uh, output voltage, unless you uh, screw something up like I just did there. Um, but in any case, halfway you get about half of the output voltage, uh, zero volts down there. And then I'm using a six volt power supply. It looks like that side will be better to hold it. Um, and uh, so now I got six volts up there. Uh, we got the highest voltage we can get right there. It's going to uh, pin 6 and pin 2. They just look at the voltage. They don't let current in or out. So whatever voltage we set with the trim pot will be the voltage that gets to uh, both pins. So we got above two-thirds supply voltage. Pin 6 said set the output low. Pin 2 is just waiting for less than one-third voltage, so it's not doing anything. Uh, pin 4 is waiting for a low voltage close to ground, so we went to the positive supply to disable it. Now, um, when I lower this, this would be a Schmidt trigger inverter. So we got a high input, low output, that's inverted when you got a comparator. Um, but uh, this is Schmidt trigger, so we're halfway. We saw before sometimes you could be halfway and the output is high. Since uh, we recently set the output low by raising the input voltage enough, it's going to stay low until we drop below one third of the supply voltage. There we go. So that is two volts um, right now. And um, uh, four volts up there. I think I said three before. Um, down here, two volts. That's where it changes. You can see I can move this range here and um, the output will stay where it is until we overcome four volts now. And then it will stay where it is down low until we go lower than two volts, at which point it goes high right there. That is how the inverter works. So um, hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, pin eight, positive supply. Uh, pin one, negative supply. That uh, sets the one third and two thirds in there. Um, there's uh, three resistive areas. Again, voltage divider. But you tap into the uh, uh, one third and two third spot right there. And um, so it's... Uh, a fixed variable resistor with two inputs instead of a trim pot with uh, one output. So in any case, uh, when the output's high right now, you can see positive goes there through the red LED and then down to ground. Um, when the output is low, of course, then, um, and uh, I didn't realize that'd be so wiggly there, uh, positive resistor there uh, powering the LED. So it's got to head to negative down there. So the output is to the negative supply. That is ground. Hopefully that makes sense. So we can zoom in and take a closer look at the schematic. So blue LED is naturally brighter than the red LED. Plus, output connects to ground really well with the 555 timer. I'm using the NE555. Uh, UA or micro A555 should work the same. If you, uh, and it, I think they say P at the end. They may or may not. Um, but in any case, uh, if you got different letters in front, maybe a different type of uh, 555. So be aware of that. Look at the uh, data sheet to make sure it can handle whatever you're powering. But in any case, uh, output's low, the blue LED uh, lights up. Connects to ground really well, blue LED is brighter, so I got a higher value resistor, 1000 ohm resistor. That is when the trim pot gets above two thirds or less, uh, four volts in this case, since I'm using six volts at the supply. Uh, just keep the math easy. And then uh, if we lower it down to one third or less, two volts or less right there, that will set the output high, so low input, high output. It doesn't connect to, uh, in this case, six volts as well as it connects to ground. We got like some diodes that goes through transistors with diodes in them. And um, so you lose about a volt and a half and uh, whatever the supply voltage is. When we're using five, we were outputting about 3.5. You can measure that with the meter. It's not going to be a Zach either. Now that we got six, we're going to lose about 1.5. It's about 4.5. So I don't want you to think this means it's always in this case 4.5 it's just 1.5 volts less than the supply voltage when you're powering a load without a load it would probably be about five volts you lose about one volt um, hopefully that makes sense um so yeah that is uh, really about it as i said before 
Um, or I'm not sure if I mentioned this. So pin four, we don't want it to do anything. If it gets a low input, then it will go low. I do, I believe I said that. Um, but yeah, the best way to prevent that is to connect it directly to the supply voltage. You can also use a resistor, but in an earlier video, if I touch that resistor on this end, imagine there's a resistor there, it was a 10K resistor, that still made the uh, 555 go haywire uh, for some reason. And um, so the uh, direct connection right here, we should not have that problem. Can't remember if it was low or not, um, but yeah, there you can see I can touch it. Maybe it's uh, stronger in this state. Um, we'll go down uh, low right there. Yeah, I can still touch it again, and it's not making it go haywire. But when I had a resistor going across, it did. Um, so just something I uh, discovered on accident in an earlier video. So I thought I would mention that uh, right now. And uh, I discovered it uh, while I was filming, uh, basically. Um, I had to reshoot the shot, but I was filming it. So right before the scene I showed, I had just discovered that. Um, I thought the pull-up resistor since it was going to the positive supply, would be powerful enough to overcome uh, stray signals uh, from like a screwdriver or something. But uh, I was wrong. So, in any case, uh, hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted on the screen, and check out the links down below. They all help a lot. I'll see you in the next video.